was asked us regarding different type of teaching. Where did all these different types of teaching come from? And all these different churches, how did they come about? How, how did things get so confused? He said, we, we have one Bible, but so many different teaching, so many different doctrines. Somebody's right. And there's a whole lot of people that are wrong. <laughs> I said, can't be but one right. And if it's not but one right, everything else out there is wrong. Yeah, yeah, I've been a little dogmatic about it. But it's the truth. It's the truth. So then I say the way we would find out what's right and what's wrong, we have to go to the book. Go to the Bible. And we know that the Bible, if you're a Bible believer, then you believe that the Bible is the word of God. Now, if you're not a Bible believer, then a, that's the subject that we discuss and that talk about. It. Even time, anytime we talk about the Bible, it's minute to you. If you don't believe that the Bible is the word of God. Now, if you believe the Bible is the word of God, then we can sit and talk. But if you don't believe it, then there's nothing I can do to help you. Nothing I can do to help you. But to those that believe that the Bible is the word of God, then let's go there and whatever this Bible say, let's believe it even though we don't understand it. Because we are faith walkers. And if we believe what this Bible say, God will give us understanding by and by as you walk with him. He will enlighten you. He will help you to understand his word. So let's get to these churches, the church. How did the church, where did this, the word, the first church get started? Well, we discussed that the other day. The first time this word church, the English word church was mentioned, that is found in the 16th chapter of the book of St. Matthew, church. And that came from the one that established, the one that uh, was God's plan of salvation for God's people. The church was established for that souls could be delivered. Because the Bible says that uh, uh, Jesus is going to come and save his peoples from their sin. Amen. He was the son of God. He was God himself. He came to save his people that had turned their back from the book of Genesis up until now. Uh, when Adam sinned against God, God had a plan to deliver, to bring man back to him. And, and, and uh, Jesus was that <clears throat> plan. Jesus was that, 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 that motor of that engine that God used to bring the people, to turn the people's heart back to him, to bring the people back, to bring humanity back to God. And we find in the book of Isaiah that Eagle Eye prophet that prophesied so much about the future of the nation of Israel and also the future of the human race. So Isaiah here in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah he gets a bird's eye view. He's looking in the future. About 800 years, Isaiah declared this about 800 years before Jesus was born, somewhere in that figure. And this is what Isaiah declared. Isaiah 53 and 1 says, What, uh, Elder, I mean, uh, Deacon. Uh, Marcus will be our reader for tonight. Uh, amen. So he's going to start reading. Who hath believed our report? 
And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when he shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Now here is uh, Isaiah. Here, Isaiah is uh here Isaiah is 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 uh, prophesying in this fifty third chapter Isaiah is prophesying he's talking about something that's gonna happen uh close to eight hundred years before it happened. He has a vision or maybe a revelation. And he's been talking and he asked the question, uh, once we read what Isaiah, once we read what Isaiah has said, then we ask the question, he asked the question. Isaiah says, who has believed the prophets? Now, he wasn't just talking about himself. He said, who has believed our report? Who was doing the reporting? The prophet, God's prophet, those men that God had raised up to speak for him. I believe the Hebrew writer made a statement to help us to understand. He says, uh, in, in, in divers Sunday's times and divers manners, our God, he said, God spoke to the fathers by through the through the prophets. Uh, Minister Wilson, could you give me Hebrew? I believe Hebrew first chapter, Hebrew one and, and one. I believe, I believe we'll find that there. Hebrew one and one. Hebrew one and one. Now, read. God, who in sundry times and in divers matters spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, had in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made, he made the world. All right, good. God, who at, at sundry times, at different times, in various ways, in time past, before and now, the writer, the Hebrew writer said, God spake in time past to the fathers by the prophet. So it just didn't start in this day. Ever since there was mankind or humanity on this earth, God was using prophets to speak to his people. Amen. Well, if, if God don't tell me, I ain't going to believe it. God ain't going to tell you nothing. God will send his prophet to tell you something. God will send his preacher to tell you something. You don't believe that? Uh, 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 in, 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 in our day and time, when God called all these prophets, you go back far as Moses. Moses testified that the Lord our God going to raise up a prophet like unto me, he says. And Moses truly was a prophet. He said, like unto me. But you're going to hear him and all you that don't hear him going to be cut off. God has always used uh, uh, somebody to speak to his people. So uh, here, uh, Isaiah says, who has believed how more than one prophet of God was speaking? Who has believed our report? What report are you talking about, Mo, uh, Isaiah? That the Messiah, the Savior of the world, is going to come. 
those that struggling under sin, that will be a deliverer that will come and deliver you out of your sin if you want to be out, if you want to get out. No longer would you have to take a turtle or ox or a goat or, 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 or coming off up for sin. He's going to be the sin bearer himself. Who has believed our report and to whom the arm of the Lord revealed. He, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form nor commonness. And when we shall see him, there shall be no beauty that we should desire of him. Now Isaiah is prophesying. He's saying, this is what you are you going you look for. I don't know what Jesus looked like. I know what a lot of these pictures that they had painted. I mean, I don't believe Jesus looked like that. But Galileo, whoever did the painting, they that's their idea of what Jesus looked like. <laughs> but I, now the Bible do tell me, give me a general idea of what they expect of him. Because John said, I saw him. I took a glimpse at him. And he had hair like lamb wood. And I'd never seen a picture of Jesus with hair like lamb wood. It was all long and blonde and stringy. But John said, I saw him. <laughs> Fact about it, John said, I walked with him. I held him. I ate, him. I ate with him. So I know what he looked like. Amen. Amen. But we ain't gonna get we won't get caught up in that. He says here, verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men, man, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were, were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Did not this happen to Jesus when he came? Yes. All we had to do is look. In the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the nation, Israel, would look at Isaiah, what Isaiah had said. If they believed the report, then when Jesus showed up, they would have known this must be Jesus. This must be the Messiah. I mean, many of them believed it. Many of them said, is not this is the Messiah? Is not this the Christ? But them religious folks, Lord have mercy. Those that should have known, they could see how he was treated. He was despised. He came, the scripture said, Jesus came to his own and his own rejected him. The religious leaders rejected Jesus. Man of sorrow. Took our grief, took 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 the pain that we should have been, uh, 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 uh been uh, put up on us. He took it. We we didn't even appreciate him. Amen. They didn't appreciate him when he came. Call him a Belgian So your mama had you out of wedlock. All that they they treated him. As though he was nothing. They despised him. Read on, Doc. Isaiah 53, verse 4. Surely he hath, he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Look at what he went through. He taken on the punishment that humanity, that we should have been suffering. He taken that on. He was our way out of no way. He was our burden 
barrier. He's the one that uh, when we should have been stoned to death, when we should have been, we should have died when we were in our sin. His mercy, his grace. He died for our sins. He was, he was wounded for our sin, our transgression. We transgress God's law. God said, thou shalt not, and we did. Mm -hmm. So we transgress God's law. We violated God's law. He was buried. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripe, with the stripe that he was beaten, Hallelujah. Do you know how he was beaten? Do you know how he was treated when he came? They treated him, as we say, like a stepchild. They wouldn't acknowledge him. They call him a Belshazzar. You're a devil. Lord have mercy. But yet, he was beaten. His back was laid open. They beat him so that he was beyond recognition. What I'm saying, he was our way out. He was our God's plan of salvation. Yes. So by him being the God's plan of salvation, he had every right to say what he said in the 16th chapter of St. Matthew, I will build a church. Amen. So if he went through all of this, he has every right to establish, he know what God wants. Amen. He know what God wants. He was sent him from God, by God, yes. to bring forth the plan of salvation to get mankind back to God. Amen. He said our peace was upon him and we'll the strike, the beating that he took was our salvation, was our healing. <laughs> now that sounds crazy to a person that don't understand how in the world that this is the power. This is the awesomeness of God. Yeah. The awesomeness of God. His, his track, the beating that he took, we was healed. Our sin, our soul was delivered. Sin had us bound. You know that. You know that was some stuff that you were doing. You knew wasn't right. But you couldn't do nothing about it. But when you look to Jesus, when you look to Jesus, he was our way out. Verse 6 says what? All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Mm -hmm. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare this his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. Isaiah said, I, 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 hear me. I'm telling you, I'm letting you to know what to expect. This is what you to expect. He was speaking to the fathers, the generation uh, 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 of, of the day, of that day. Isaiah was declaring before 800 some years, uh, somewhere in that vicinity, he was telling the people, this is what the nation, this is what you expect. 
This is what you expect. This is your train out of uh, uh, Lonely Bar. <laughs> Lonely Bar was a, a place of do nothing. <laughs> Lonely Bar was, 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 was nothing going on there. And Jesus was our train. He was our way to get out of Lonely Bar. He was our way to get out of that crippling life, that we, lifestyle that we were living, that sinful lifestyle that we were living. Amen. He was our way. Mm -hmm. He was oppressed. Mm -hmm. He was afflicted. Mm -hmm. Yet he opened not his mouth. So Isaiah is showing the people of his day. Remember when one of us had Sin, mm -hmm. you had to go get a lamb, a goat, a bullock, a turtle. You had to bring something to offer up some blood mm. to please God. Yeah. That's what we had to do. But but this man, this man Jesus, he was going to be led like a lamb before the slaughter. And a sheep before his shear is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. When he was led to the cross, Jesus didn't go there screaming and hollering and kicking. <laughs> Jesus did not do that. Jesus bared his cross. He bared his cross Along, somebody wrote a song. Must Jesus bear the cross along, and all men go free? No, 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 no. You just can't keep continuing your sin and think everything gonna be all right. Not gonna be all right. He opened not his mouth, and he says he was taken from prison, prison, and from judgment. Who shall declare his generation? He asked the question now. He asking the question. He's telling us that Jesus, this this lamb, this 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 this, this child that was going to be born, he's going to be cut off at an early age because he got a work to do. He was sent here to do a work. He said he's going to be cut off. He, uh, 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 let's see. Uh, give me the name chapter, Cynthia, the name chapter of Isaiah. The name chapter of Isaiah. Mm. Let's see, am I in the right book here? What I said, the name chapter of Isaiah. Now, let's see here. Is it the name? Name, name. Let me help, help me. Uh, am I in the right book? name chapter? I believe, uh, yes, 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 yes. I'm just looking for it. Uh, uh, nine, nine and six. Isaiah nine and six. Same prophet that prophet in, 50, in Isaiah 53. Isaiah nine and six says what? For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Isaiah says this is what you are to expect forefathers. 
our fathers, the Jewish nation, the world, this is what you ought to look for. A child is going to be born. The same prophet is asking, do you believe the report? Do you believe what you've been hearing? Do you believe what the prophet has declared to you? Because in that day and time, God spoke to his people, the fathers, by or through the prophet. And the prophet was declaring, this is what's going, this is the future. This is what's going to happen. And Isaiah make it so plain. He said, unto us a child is born, a son is given. And the word, the government, he's going to bear the government upon his shoulders. Hallelujah. Everything, hallelujah, is going to be centered around him. Hallelujah. Lord, have mercy. Who you done put in the center of your life? Are you building your life on your finance, your looks, what you own, your bank account, and let them left Jesus out? The government will, government will be up on his shoulder. He shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. They call him everything but that. <laughs> they call him, and, and out there, evidently, they didn't believe the report. Amen. This was the one that was going to come and establish God's plan of salvation. He was to fulfill. This child was a child of destiny. He had a purpose. He was supposed to have been called the mighty God. The everlasting father, the prince of peace. He was to be one for everybody that he counseled. When he came, he fulfilled the scriptures. Amen. He was a counselor. He healed the blind. He raised the dead. Those that were grieving, he counseled them. He gave them wisdom. And now, Isaiah asked the question, since he'd been cut off, where, where did you stop reading, Marcus? Verse 9. Verse 9, read. Isaiah 53, 9. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had, not, he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Why was he killed then? Why was he cut off? He had done no violence. No guilt. Pilate said that uh, you, you brought this man to me and I find no fault in him. Why you want to kill him? Why you want to crucify him? Didn't realize. Uh, Paul said, pick this thing up and Paul said, if they had known who Jesus was, <laughs> if they had known, they didn't believe the report. If they had known who he was, they would not have crucified, but the God of this world had blinded their mind. Some of us hear the word, but we don't believe it. <laughs> Some of us hear it, but we don't believe it. Because I suppose that's why in the Old Testament days when the prophets would preach to the peoples, many times you read where they say, hearken, hearken to the word of God. That word hearken means to hear with the intention of doing. Don't just hear it and, and don't do. Hearken unto the word of the God. Hear it with a mind 
that whatever God says, I'm going to do it. Even though I don't understand it, I'm, I'm getting around to the church. But we got to get the, 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 what the church foundation, what the church was built on. So we can understand this thing. We just can't jump into it. We got to go back to where it started from. You, you can't build a house without laying a foundation. If you do, when the rain come, when trouble come, it's going to crash. And that's what's happening to a lot of folks today. <laughs> they they building a house without a foundation. And when trouble come into their life, they, they disappoint. They, first of all, they disappoint themselves. They disappoint their friends, their neighbors. Because they had a form, looked like they was really easing on down the road. Until something happened, they had a crash, and they fell apart because they didn't have a foundation. They didn't have the truth of God's word. That's why a lot of people can't stand when the pressure come on. God, that's why it is necessary for the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost will sustain you. When trouble come, when the pressure of this world come against us, we won't collapse. Jesus said to the, uh, uh, in, his day, in his teaching, he said there was two men that went out and built the house. One went out and he dug down. He excavated that top sword until he struck virgin ground. And when he hit that virgin ground, ground that never had been disturbed, then he began to lay his foundation. Because it was established upon a rock. One man went out and just built it on top of the sand. He didn't excavate. He didn't go down and build a foundation. And when the rain came and the wind blew, that sand going to move. Because it's not stable. It was built upon uh, inferior material. What are you building on? What are you are you building on some of these churches that man made? These churches that man founded? Are you building up on the rock? <laughs> that rock is Jesus. That rock is the one that the prophet talked about. Let that soak. As the psalmist said, Selah. Meditate upon what just been said. Verse 9, read that again. And he made his grave with the wicked and the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. For he shall bear their iniquities. Look here. You don't have to live in sin. No longer. Isaiah is telling us. He's predicting what the future is going to be like. Yes. You don't have to. We don't have to continue. There's hope. The Isaiah was giving them some hope. Just hang on in there. Israel, hang on in now. For Father, help is on the way. Help is on the way. And 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 and, and that all extends from Isaiah prophet. Now we are enjoying the fruits of what Isaiah talked about. Yes. <laughs> We're in the church. We're in the triumphant church of God now. We're in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
We're in the apostolic church. Yeah. Hallelujah. The church that Jesus founded. Mm -hmm. The church that, 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 that called us. He, he, he said that he shall... Uh, he said that uh, he shall he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. God was pleased. The heavenly father, the creator, the one that Adam sin against and cause sin to come upon this entire world. God says when he saw Jesus dying on the cross, he was pleased with him. He know that <laughs> the plan of salvation was perfected. That's why Jesus said when he died on that cross, the last words that he spoke was, it is Finish. What is finished? That plan. The plan that God had to get turned, that get man back to get humanity back in, in, in contact with God. Yeah. A way was made. Yeah. God was pleased with it. God was pleased with the suffering that Jesus suffered. Now, are you willing to declare his generation? Are you willing to carry on what Jesus started? Are you willing to carry on what Jesus started? Not what Martin Luther started. Not what John Calvary started. Not what a John Wesley in the Methodist started. Not what uh, 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 Charles Russell started, Jehovah's Witness. Not what the Church of the Living God started, which was William Christen. Christmas, rather. Not what the Church of God in Christ was started by Bishop Charles Mason. You want to get into the church that Jesus started. You want to get under the doctrine that Jesus taught. There's a difference. And you know why? It's a lot of false teaching. Why we got so much false teaching out here? Because somebody, God did not call them. And if God called them, they found a shortcut. That, 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 that filled the Lucas. <laughs> Were blind the eyes. The, Satan himself, the devil, will blind the eyes of men and get them caught up in materialistic things, get them caught up in, 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 in worldly stuff. That's what distracts us from following God. That's why Jesus. In the 16th chapter of St. Matthew, he says, after he had came and walked on this earth for 33 years, he says, I've been to the synagogue. God is not pleased. I went to the temple where he rocks and Zerubbabel's temple. I sat there and I watched the service. And God is not pleased. Is God pleased with the church that you're attending? As, look at, look at, look at the scriptures. And ask yourself, is God pleased with what I'm doing? Jesus said, I'm going to build me a church. Did we read that? I want you all, I want us to get that. Did we read that? I believe that's St. Matthew 16 and 18, I believe. St. Matthew 
16 and 18, I believe. Jesus said to his apostles, I say unto thee, thou Peter, upon whom, upon this rock, shall I, he said, upon this rock, I will build my church. When I read that, that puzzled me. Because it caused me to start thinking, why would Jesus make a statement like that? He went to the synagogues. He sat there in the synagogue and, he, and, the, and, and, and the law was taught. The book of Moses. He sat there and he listened. He went to the temple. And now Somebody might say, if you allow me to use the word, he had the audacity to come in and want to build a church. And we got all these churches around here. Why is that? Why would he ask yourself the question? Why would Jesus make a statement like that? And you got churches that have been around for I don't know how long. Because Jesus saw something that was not pleasing to him and nor was it pleasing to his father. It was not pleasing to him and it wasn't pleasing to his father. That's why he made that statement. How would build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates, Satan will come up against this church that I'm real. Right now, let, if y'all allow me to just use my mind a little bit, just, just do a little, pause and a little folly. The church is evidently that day. The devil <laughs> was in Florence and Somebody, somebody was not uh, giving God all that God wanted and God expected of mankind. There was some weak, there was some weak, there was some, uh, some weak areas there. Oh, they had a form of God. They would go there, the priest would come out with his robe on, his breath played on. He had all of the outward appearance. Looking holy. <laughs> Looking sanctimonious. But wouldn't give God what God wanted. And he says, I'm going to build a church. And this church that I'm going to build. Hallelujah. Men no longer have to stumble and stagger under the influence of Satan. You don't have to be sanctified Sunday and Monday you go back and doing your thing. Mm. <laughs> God is calling for holiness. God is calling for serious believers. God don't want his people on a roller coaster. Up and down, in and out. And you wonder why. You wonder why you're struggling. Because you don't have with God, you're in the wrong church. Let me put it that way. Somebody is not giving you the pure 100% of God's word. They're giving you a pacifier. And you begging for milk and they stick you a pacifier in your mouth. And you'll suck down that pacifier for a while and you realize this ain't getting it. You spit it out. That's what a baby do. <laughs> even a baby won't eat. <laughs> you can't even fool a baby for a little while. That baby crying. You stick that pacifier, put it in mouth. 
You he'll be quiet for a while. That's why you see his pastor about fall on the floor and he hollering. You need the real thing. You got to get in the real church. Amen. <laughs> That watered down gospel that you are getting, it can't please God. And you know it. Because it's not even pleasing you. Your own conscience tells you that God is not pleased with what you're doing. Amen. Well, preacher, how am I to get it right? Jesus said that I would build a church. And Jesus went to the cross. He died on Calvary's cross. He lived. He showed. He taught 12 men. He taught them how this church is to be structured. He taught them how to get into the church. He told them before he died on the cross. He says, Remit repentance and remission of sin shall be preached in my name starting at Jerusalem. Amen. That's where it's supposed to be all started and, and, and radiated from that. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem was that holy place. Jerusalem was that place that God told Solomon, say, Solomon, I, I appreciate when you dedicated the temple. You honored me. And he said, uh, 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 I'm going to put my name there. And when any time you get in trouble, all you got to do is look to Jerusalem. Lord have mercy. Amen. Jerusalem, you... Jerusalem is the center of the world today, right today. Mm -hmm. Everything is surrendered around Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. It's hanging on what happened. God is doing some things. Mm -hmm. It started in Jerusalem. The plan of salvation that God had for mankind to turn mankind or humanity back to God. It started in Jerusalem. Yes. Jesus told Peter after he rose from the dead and the 12 apostles, you go back to Jerusalem and you stay there till you be a doer of the power from on high. Other words, it's time now for that living water. Mm -hmm. That living water to flow out of your belly. He was talking about the Holy Ghost. He told him that I'm going to send back the comforter, mm -hmm. which is the Holy Ghost. And after the Holy Ghost come up on you, you shall have power. Amen. Satan no longer can take you and, and you land there at night and you know you're not supposed to be doing certain things and, and, and Satan just get on your mind and start messing with your mind and you got to go. But you got some power now. When, when the enemy start talking to you, man, this old flood, you can say to Satan, the Lord God rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. I got power now. Yes. After that, the Holy Ghost come up on me. I got power over my flesh. I got power. Mm -hmm. And on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost fell on 120 people. And Peter preached the first apostolic message. He believed the report. He believed Jesus. And he preached the first apostolic message. That's the church that Jesus said he was going to build. The doors of that church was open that day. That church that Jesus established. Not John Calvin. Not Charles Mason. Jesus established. He established this apostolic church. It was built up on the apostolic doctrine. Yes. That, this church was built up on the apostolic doctrine. So the Holy Ghost fell. Ah. 
They spoke in tongues. They was baptized in Jesus' name. And the Bible said, you read in that second chapter of Acts, the Bible says, after the Peter had preached to them, and they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? We believe the report, Peter. Yes. You told us what happened. Hallelujah. You let us know we killed the Prince of Peace. Yes, yes. You let us know our forefather. We, we said, crucify him. Let his blood be upon us and our children. Now we understand, Peter. We understand. What shall we do? What can we do? What do I need to do? I'm asking you tonight. Ask yourself, what do you need to do to get right? I'm telling you. Repent. Repent. Tell God you, you're sorry for all the sin that you committed. You have a way out. The lamb has died on the cross. He declared that the work that God has sent me to do, it is finished. Yes. The church doors are open now. The church that Jesus said he was going to start, the door is open. Peter preached the first apostolic message. 3,000 souls, the Holy Ghost fell on them. They were baptized. And the Bible says that they continue in the apostolic doctrine. Because that was the true church. But we got a whole lot of different doctrines out here that's flying around. And all they're doing is distracting people. This, this sound good doctrine. It's nothing but, we call it sugar water. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all know, you, you may not be from the South. See, I'm from the South. Yeah, sugar, they gave you water and put some sugar in it. <laughs> sugar water. It's weak. <laughs> it's weak. This, this watered down salvation, this watered down doctrine, this apostolic doctrine, give you some strength. Nurture you, strengthen you, help you to walk according to God's word, help you to be obedient to God's word. You have a way out now. You have a way out. Get out of these false churches, these weak churches. If your pastor is is, is living one lifestyle and doing something else and come out. Don't do as I do. Do what I say do. You, 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 you're living in, you, your life is hanging in the balance. Mm -hmm. Your soul is hanging in the balance. I'm not, I'm just telling you that, they're giving you the truth. The apostolic truth. I didn't come here to play. I left the street. I gave the devil everything that belongs to him back. I don't want nothing to do with the, the devil but give him a good whooping. That's what that's my job. Is to expose him and expose all of those that the devil is using. Yes. Uh. I'm through. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Repentance while the baptism in Jesus' name. I said to you, I'm apostolic to the core. <laughs> From the outer skin to the very seed in the cellar, I'm apostolic. Yes. And I change it. I, I'm not changing. Hallelujah. I'm not changing. I'm not going to take down. When I die, I'm going to die apostolic. Because yes. I want eternal life. I want God to be pleased with me. I want When I get there, I want him to say, well done, Adam. What little bit you did, you did it. <laughs> <laughs> well done, son. All right, God bless you. And may heaven continue to smile upon you. I am Pastor Levi Adam from the Lighthouse Apostolic Faith Church, which is located right here in the Chatham community in Chicago, Illinois. We say happy Mother's Day to all of you. And may God continue to bless.